the praises of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. And let it, let it rise, oh, let it rise, oh. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Once again, we've been blessed by the God of heaven who doeth all things well. Amen. We saw fit one more time that we're able to come together on this day in this place with the express purpose of worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. After that, brothers and sisters, you and I ought to be eternally grateful. God is good all the time. Yeah. And all the time, God is good. Right. He woke you up this morning, started you on your way. Gave us the activity of our limbs and the right frame of mind to be able to come and to worship him. And for that, brothers and sisters, you and I ought to be eternally grateful. God is good. All the time and all the time. God is good. There were some folks who laid down on last night was not fortunate to rise on this morning. But God smiled on you. He dispatched one of his angels that gently shook you. And you arose from your bed of slumber. And we ought to count ourselves as Bless. The psalmist records in Psalm 34 and verse number one, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. In the good times, I'm going to bless the Lord. And even in those difficult, dismal times, he's still worthy to be praised. Verse number three, the Bible says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And in verse number eight, the Bible says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is mm-mm good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him, and I recommend to you Jesus Christ this morning. And to those who are visiting with us, we make no bones about it here at the New Haven Church of Christ. We want you to get to come to continue to be with us again, again, and again. And members of the body of Christ, we just expect to see you. Uh, the Lord has blessed you. He's moved some things around so that you're able to be able to come and give him all the praise, the honor, and glory and which he is due. Amen. I know this is the Christmas season, if you will, but, uh, and you know, some folk only come on Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter, but the Lord we serve, he ought to be praised all the time. Amen. 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 But we're grateful to those who are here, who have come to hear is their word from the Lord. We want to direct your attention to Luke, the second chapter. Luke, the second chapter. A long way to go. Short time to get there. We're grateful for all of our brothers leading us in the devotional parts of our service today. That, that singing, that is spirited. Amen. We appreciate uh, the enthusiasm that we use when it comes to praising our God. Yes. Bible says, don't be slowful in business, but firm in spirit when it comes to serving the Lord. Luke, the second chapter, and we're actually going to begin at verse number one. Luke, the second chapter, we're going to begin at verse number one. We'll make four more introductions at uh, later time uh, in our service today. I want to be continuing to pray for all of those who are sick and who are ailing at this time. Uh, be prayerful for those families that are even bereaved among us. Y'all know the song, Oh, Come, Let Us Adore? Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Cry, I said, Lord, one more time. Oh, come. Oh, 
that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while uh, Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went out to Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, uh, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, uh, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger because there was no room for them in the end. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had uh, gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and to see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph with the babe lying in the manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all the things uh, who heard it marveled of those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them <coughs> in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. This morning I want to speak to you from the subject. Jesus is the best gift you could ever give or receive. Amen. Jesus is the best gift you could ever give or receive. Three practical points for you this morning. Uh, number one, Jesus came to save us. Jesus came to save us out of verse 11 of the text. Number two, a relationship with Jesus will yield joy and peace. A relationship with Jesus will yield joy and peace. And number three, continue praising God for all he has promised and performed in our lives. Verse 20. Continue praising God for all he has promised and performed in our lives. We live today in a world that calls good evil and evil good. Even in this wonderful time of giving and reflection, man's mindset has shifted from Christ to materialism. Yeah. Say amen when you can. Yeah. In our culture today, we prefer Santa over the Savior. We prefer Mr. Claus over Christ Jesus. We prefer Rudolph the Red-Nosed Ranger over our Redeemer, Savior, and Lord. 
We prefer Fawcett the snowman over a friend that's sitting closer than the brother. Not much has changed since 2,000 years ago. And the world didn't have much room for Christ uh, when he came. In verse number 7 of the text, the Bible says, And uh, she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in smiling and clothes, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the end. Even with all of our technological advances, we still don't have room or time for Jesus today. That's a sin and a shame because not so many times we have more love for the world than we do Christ. And uh, John, the apostle of love, gave us some admonitions in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15 and verse number 16. He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the uh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And these things are not of the Father, but of the world. Christ, church, don't be dismayed because Jesus said in John 13, 16 and verse 33, these things I've spoken unto you that you may have peace. In the world, you're going to have some trouble. Yes. There will be times of heartache and tribulation. He says, but be of good cheer. As long as you have me, I have overcome the world. Yes. Don't allow all of the consumerism push you into a depression. Amen. This is supposed to be a time of peace and reflection, not one of anxiety and worry. We need to continue to keep our focus on Jesus the Christ. I know on December 25th, this is the day that many deem in our world today as Christmas, uh, the day we recognize the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm not here uh, to dispute the claim. Uh, on December 25th, there's no biblical evidence that uh, Christ was ever born on this particular day. Not here to argue that point, but uh, I think it's futile. I try to get the world to think about Christ 365 days a year. And when one day when the world gives you, we need to take advantage of that. Amen? I don't know the day he was actually born, but I do know that he was born. Amen, somebody. And we need to relish in the fact that he came from heaven, clothed in sinful flesh, came and lived the life as an example so that you and I would know how we ought to live. And I'm grateful that we live in a nation that is even able to recognize that. But many times the focus has shifted from Christ to what I get. What are you going to give me? I didn't get what I want now, my lips. Pope guy. Walk around mad so everybody can see it. What's wrong with you? I didn't get what I want. We're already a selfish culture and society. It's all about me, 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 me. Take it, self, 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 me. Yeah, it's all about me. Me, my, and I. But we have an example of a God who loved us so much that he sent heaven's best. And that ought to be on our minds. It ought to be on our hearts. We serve the God that loved us. And I stop by to tell you, as good as you look, we all haven't been good boys and good girls. We've done some bad things. We've been to some places where we should not have been. We've had our shoes under some beds. Okay, uh, uh, somebody just woke up. But this is a reality for many of us. Thank God for Jesus and the covering of the blood of his son. I'm, I'm thankful that he came. And he came as a baby, but I appreciate what he did as a man. He pardoned our sins on Calvary's cross. He died for the sins of you and for me. Bible says in Romans 5 and verse number 6, for when we were yet without strength at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Romans 5 and verse number 8, the Bible said, but God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That sounds like a good love story to me. Amen, somebody. It's not the fact that you and I deserve to live. Let me tell you something. All the days you've been extended, it's not because you've been so good. Amen, somebody. You go to church, you got the Bible under your arm, you got the app on your phone, and sometimes you still don't read it. And we, we, there are things we know how we should respond, how Christ will have us to respond, but yet we can't bring ourselves to do it. But yet, time and time again, he gives us one more day. It's not because we performed so well the previous day. There were years when we were distanced and apart from God. Amen, somebody? But God, because of his infinite love, 
Man had a sin debt that he could not pay. The Bible says Romans 3 and 23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's a penalty for sin. Romans 6, 23, for the payment of the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He came to die so that we can have a chance to be with God and live with him eternally. Jesus came to save us. The dynamic of our text that we have before us, uh, the outline of the birth story or the birth account of Jesus Christ, we have uh, Mary and Joseph heading into uh, Bethlehem for the census that was called the counting of men. There was a time where you assessed property and also men for military service, if you will. But at this particular time, our focal point this morning will be in verses number 8 through about verse number 20. Bible said they came uh, in the country shepherds living out in the field. They were minding their business, doing what they do. And, and many times the shepherd's place was in proximity to the temple because that was back in the time when the Lord required animal sacrifices. And this was something that was done on a consistent basis as a part of temple worship. And, 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 and uh, when we think about shepherds, they weren't known to quote unquote be the wisest people. But uh, also in many cases is based on that concept of being in contact with blood, they weren't even fit to do temple worship, if you will. But notice who shows up to these common people, the angel of God. Bible says in verse number 9, Behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shined about them, and, and they were greatly afraid. I can only imagine if you see somebody in a bodily form and they start glowing. Well, most of y'all wouldn't have stuck around to have a conversation. Hey, amen, somebody. Amen. You're like the folk in the movie, falling down, trying to get away from somebody. Hey, amen. But the Bible says that uh, they were greatly afraid. And there was more than one of them. They were greatly afraid. But the angel of the Lord said unto them, don't be afraid. For behold, I bring you what? Good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. What's the good news? Read the next verse. The Bible says, for there... On this day, in the city of David, in Bethlehem, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, is born. Amen, somebody. Up until this point, there was no propitiation for the sins of mankind. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that he died once and for all. His blood cleanses back and it cleanses forward. And I'm so thankful for Jesus and all that he does for us. He loves us because he made us. Uh, Psalmist reminds us in Psalm 103, 13, 14, uh, as the father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. But he knows our frame and remembers that we are but dust. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. And his righteousness is to his children's children. He came to show us love. And as a result of receiving his love, we ought to be willing to share his love with other people. 34 and 35, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. Bible says all men will know that you are my disciple. By the love you have one for another. That's out, of, that's out of the words of Jesus. Jesus, how am I supposed to love people? He said, just like I have loved you. A amen, somebody. Amen. See, you can't always take it to familiar love because family don't always love the way they need to. A a amen, sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes family, when you do something wrong, they'll send you and kick you out the house. A a amen, somebody. Y'all ain't trying to pray with me. I I I'm just being real. That that, that's the reality with some of us. But he said, I want you to uh, love others like I have loved you. He said, if you love properly, people will know that you belong to me by the way you treat other people. Amen. Jesus came to save us. The Bible says in Luke verse, chapter 19 and verse number 10, he came to seek and to save those who are lost. Amen, somebody. Amen. Now the Bible says in verse number 12 of the text, and this will be a sign. He told them. He said, look, hey, guys, uh, look, this is great news. This is great news. I know you got the guy signing and everything. He said, but look, he said, listen to this. Don't be afraid of me. I, I came to bring you good news, good, good tidings of great joy. You ought to be excited about this. Israel at the time oppressed under Roman rule. They're looking for a Savior. Remember, there was a time when Jesus said, uh, I'm going to go. And it, they thought, man, because he had all these miracles, he said, man, he's going to get us from under Roman rule. 
They thought he was going to set up an earthly kingdom and then take over. That's why they were buying. They said, Lord, let me be on your right hand and your left hand. You remember that? But see, they had things uh, mistaken. So when they said there was a savior that was born, they were thinking that, look, we have a physical specimen who's going to come, who's going to deliver us from the rule of our enemy. But God has something greater in mind. He said, for this is born to you today, a savior who is Christ the Lord. This is going to be a sign. You're going to find this baby. He's wrapped in swaddling clothes, and he's lying in a manger. Previously said in verse number 7 of the text that there was no room for him in the end, and many deemed the fact that this is a, 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 a setting of a house that you would have uh, that passers-by would come and visit in, and, and then they, there wasn't a proper room for her uh, to be able to give birth, so he finds himself, the savior of the world is lying in a manger, which is a feeding trough for animals, horses and goats, and that's where they would put the straw and the food there, and the animals would come and eat out of it. Or it was used as a container for them to go in and, and bring what's needed to the particular animal that they're trying to feed. And the savior of the world is lying. In the he wasn't born in the palace. Raised in the ghettos of Nazareth. And we think about the dynamic. We have a savior that can identify with the feeling of our infirmities. The Bible says he's been all points tempted. Yet without sin, and he's the example for you and for me even today. The Bible says in verse number 13, and suddenly there was with him an angel, uh, look, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, so it was one initially, and then there were more who came, and then they started singing a praising glory to God in the highest. He said, and on earth, peace and goodwill to all men. Y'all sure enough about to be blessed. You all don't know who you have among you. Amen. I don't, I don't know about you, but in life, life can get hard. When we think about the concept of Christ being the Savior, when we think about the dynamic of uh, 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 the word uh, salvation comes from the word soteria, uh, which we get our word means to be delivered from. So when we think about the dynamic of soteriology, which is the doctrine of salvation, see, when it comes to the, the Lord, when they were oppressed under Roman rule, they had some difficulties in the living. They didn't have a visible king at that time. We're looking for a savior. He said, I came to set at liberty those who are bruised. I came to uplift the brokenhearted. A amen. I came to help those who are downtrodden, the poor, and those who are lame. Remember, he said, they that are old don't need the physician, but they that are sick. And you may not be sick physically, but some of us are sick spiritually. Amen, Amen somebody. If we could just put your thoughts on the screen right now. Y'all run up out of here. Your feet hurting and everything. You'll find a way to run. <laughs> and, 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 but God still deals with us. If we go down the roller decks of your text message, hey, hey, God still deals with us. Hey, hey, Amen, somebody. He said, brother, I don't text. Well, it's in your mind. It's in your mind. Well, well, because all, all the time, we don't, we don't always live just thinking about scriptures. Well, we have to be reminded. We got to plug it in. We got, because we're around worldliness all the time. And you can get caught up in the craze. Because I, I know the 20th. Well, he said, well, well if, if it's supposed to be the Lord's birthday, what, is, what am I going to get to the Lord? Well, God loved us so much, he gave us heaven's best. He already extended to us his gift. What you going to do for the Lord? How are you going to serve him? And we run ourselves right here trying to buy stuff for people. I, I ain't against gifts. I, I give them, and I still don't receive. Hey, 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 I'm not against that. But you don't have to go to the poor house because you got to live after the 25th. Yeah. 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 Your, your kid, they're going to play with it for 10, 15 minutes. Two days. Huh? And then the box be on the side with the stuff inside. It, it, it. I done ran all around. It's supposed to be a time of joy and peace and reflect. But uh, oh, you know, you've got 10 gray hairs fooling with this thing. Because, see, it's shifted from the reason for the season ought to be about Christ. But now it's shifted to materialism. That I can't wait. I got to cut service off because I'm trying to get to the store because I, I don't have. Who am I preaching to? 
Y'all looking like nobody on this side of you. Nobody, nobody on this side. But sometimes we can get caught up. There's some things we need to be delivered from. I'm so glad that we have a, 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 a Lord who's a Savior. Just like Israel needed some deliverance, we need some deliverance today. Amen. We, we, we need some help in our marriages. You, you haven't said that, man. That's <laughs> <laughs> my thing. You got problems. I know I'm hard to get. I, see. But, but the reality is, we do need some help. You got two broken people, different backgrounds, and different things, and sometimes we can be selfish. Because some of y'all see there, you want your way. You want your way. I've been around two years now. I know some of y'all want your way. And if you don't get your way, huh? You're going to shake my hand. You're going to go out the other door. Hey, hey, man. You know? but, but the reality is we need some help with a relationship with our kids. Y'all all right? We need some help with our relationships one with another. Hey, hey, Amen. You got your folk you deal with, and then your folk you won't even want to acknowledge. Call yourself a child of God. I surrender all. Stop lying. I'm trying to help you. Stop lying. And, and, and all of that. Look, we need a Savior that can help us. Because we got some infirmities that, 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 that are disturbing. Amen. We need to take home the mind of Christ. And when we think about, uh, we talk about the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22, love, joy, peace, long suffering, patience, meek, examine his faith. He said, look, against such there is no law. When we think about every single attribute, that they were displayed in the life of Jesus Christ. These are five products as a result of knowing him or having an intimate relationship with him. But I'm grateful, look, he came to save us. Because let me tell you something, he's saving us from ourselves. Because sometimes prior to Christ, we were living a lifestyle of destruction. Yeah. Huh? Some of, some of us, sometimes you were living in tunnel vision, and man, you were living destructively, and you couldn't even see how bad it was. Until yeah. somebody pulled you aside and said, Kyle, well, let me tell you, you were, you were soft. Yeah. Woo! Thank God for Jesus. Yeah. Hey, amen, somebody. Amen. Look, and we still need him to help in the saving of us today because sometimes we don't always have the right attitude or the mindset. Amen. I have the attitude please me before anybody else. That's why we have to respect. If mommy ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. No! Mommy need to get herself together too. <laughs> Making things miserable for everybody else. I ain't talking about my house. I'm talking about somebody else's house. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Hey, I gotta go home. I gotta go home. <laughs> Home with but the reality is we need, we, we need to work with some things. Yeah. There's some ways we need to change. Look, we don't want to take new behaviors into a new year. Yeah. Old behaviors into a new year. Yeah. See, all, if you always do what you always done, you'll keep getting the same thing every time. Every time. You know, sat through a hundred messages. What is it doing for you? Am I applying that which is no? That's what wisdom is. Yeah. Yeah. It's one thing to have data and information, but if it's not applied, same result. Yeah. You can have all the potential in the world, but if you don't apply that potential, what's going to change in the result? The answer is nothing. Nothing. Let me tell you something. Jesus said, in John 15, he said, look, without me, he said, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. Huh? He said, but with, with me, all things are made possible. Yeah, yeah. Who are you working with? You're trying, to, you're trying to fix your relationship with you alone. Can't do it. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. We, we need somebody that else to help save this situation. Because you've already tried it. How's it work? We need to turn it over to Jesus. Amen. You need to Jesus to uh, 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 pervade your tongue. You need the Lord to speak for you. Amen. Take all the jerking out of your neck and uh, working in your hand. All that you need Jesus to let him take over. He wouldn't do all that. Praise God. I don't know who I'm talking to. I'm trying to help somebody. It, I need to allow the Lord to continue to work and to operate so that others can't just see me. They see him working in me. There was a song Mary and Mary and them used to say, it's the God in me. But can people see the God in you? He's called us to walk. Second Corinthians 5, verse number 17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. What's the dynamic? 
Secondly, relationship with Jesus will yield joy and peace. And he indicates uh, in the text, he said, look, we bring you tidings of great joy. And then the Bible says in verse number 14, look, the angels began to say, glory in God the highest and, and peace on earth, goodwill toward all men. So it was in verse number 15, and when the angels had gone away, so they appeared at once and then they were gone back into heaven. And then the shepherds said one to another, Lord have mercy, what just happened? Let us now go to Bethlehem to see if this thing will come to pass. I, I, I know we just saw something miraculous, but let's check this thing out. They said, when you find him, you, this is what you look for. This is a sign you're going to find a baby in a manger. But the ba a baby being in a manger wasn't commonplace. That's not a na of natural order. Amen. Amen. Right. Now he says, the Bible says, next, in verse number 16, and they came with haste, and they, they, were, they were quick to do what they were instructed and Mary and Joseph and the baby were lying in the manger and, and when they had seen him they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning the child and all of those who heard it marveled of those things which were told them by the shepherd now we see some swift obedience from the shepherds question on the floor when we receive the instruction from the Lord what to do how quick are you to apply that Love your enemy. Do good to them that spitefully use and abuse you. He said, I can't even sit on the same road. My blood pressure go up. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Going to heaven where? He said, if you're unwilling to forgive your brother, he said, I don't think you're going to receive forgiveness from me. I don't care how many church services you go to. I don't care if you take communion. I don't care if you put a few dollars in. And if your heart's not right, it's too time. It means nothing. But I sang and I read the shit, so what? See, God sees the real you without the makeup. Huh? When you take your stuff off and put it on the counter, you. <laughs> when we take our teeth out and put it in the cup. <laughs> God, God sees you like other folks don't see you. Amen, somebody. That we make it before God. He knows the heart of man. He said, but, but, but when it comes to you, let me man, relationship with the Savior, let me say, it ought to bring some joy to you. <laughs> See, it, there's a distinction. It's not always a reference to happiness because happiness is based on our happiness. And if it ain't happening, you ain't happy. Y'all all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and these are realities because in life, you're going to go through some ups and downs. Yeah. Huh? I can take comfort and consolation in the fact that what he says in Psalm 23, he, he says, look, 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 I can take comfort in the fact that I've got a, a good shepherd. Yeah. And see, his rod and his staff, they, they comfort me. Yeah. He says, I'm able to prepare a table before you even in the presence of my enemy. See, when, I, when I've got security in him, it doesn't matter what you say about me. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. It, it doesn't matter the negativity you speak over my life. You don't have the power because you didn't create me. Yeah. A ain't that somebody. I was already established before we met. A ain't that somebody. See, as long as I'm in the creator's head, everything's going to be all right. I can, I can have joy even on a down day. When I think about uh, Paul and Silas in, in Acts 16, they, 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 they were in jail, but then they were singing and praying. A ain't that somebody. Earthquake. Had, look, even though they were in difficult circumstances, they still had joy. After all the things that I've been through, I, I still have what? Joy. Hey, amen, somebody. You in the Lord's house hearing his word, and, and you're still crying it up. Well, we sing, we sing, but sometimes there's no joy. We come, but yeah, I still go away, and there's no joy. And I know there are some days where it's just distressing, but your natural disposition shouldn't always be doom and gloom. Because if you have a relationship with the Savior, it ought to yield some joy and naturally some peace. See, the Bible says, Philippians chapter 4, verse number 4, rejoice in the Lord always. In case you didn't get that, again I say, rejoice. What does rejoice mean? To have joy again. I'm reminded of the fact that somebody loves me even when I just had a conversation with a person that said, you ain't nobody. 
this gonna fail, that's gonna fail. You know, look, there will be some folk who will try to write your obituary, but if you got a relationship with the Savior, what they say can't harm you. Because what they speak over you is limited because they didn't create you. Yes, yes. People say, hey, I, I'll ruin you. Man, you. See, they talk with a limited understanding of that. When my, when my father steps in, he can block whatever you try to put my way. Yes, yes. That's why you got to be careful messing with God's property. Yes. That's why you got to be careful putting your mouth on other folk that God created, that you didn't create. Huh? Miss me with that. When well, they said this in 85, it's 2017, 2018 now. Ready to go to 2019. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. That man said, look, and then he said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Philippians chapter 4, and then verse number 5. He, he said, and again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be made known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Then he said, be careful for nothing. Don't have anxiety. He said, be careful for nothing but in everything. In everything, do what? By prayer and supplication, special requests. What should I do? And, and with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Then the, then the promise comes. And then the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will able to keep your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. That passes all understanding if I haven't taken it to him. If I haven't given a supplication and I don't have a heart of thanksgiving. And, and the promise is after the instruction. I keep wondering why. I keep going in circles and I'm still not. I still don't have no I still don't have no peace. Huh? But see, see, my peace and my joy is rooted in Christ Jesus. But let me tell you something. If it's only rooted in people, you always gonna be up like this. Because some days they like you. <laughs> Smile, you don't care. Amen. Amen. You know how it is. You said, what well, co-workers we were friends yesterday? What happened? The wind blew. That's what happened. Amen. <laughs> See, if you allow your, your joy to be based on what another person says or does, you're always going to live out of balance. But see, my joy is rooted in him who loved me and created me and I did wrong and he still covered me. Not the fact that I deserve. He said, I love him so much. One more day. Despite what your enemy says. Despite what they said you should have or don't deserve. He said, one more day. But you got a Satan that loves you. He was bruised for us. Yeah. Isaiah, Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53. <laughs> Y'all, I have a scripture, so that made me turn to Isaiah 53. I was looking like I wasn't saying something within the book. Now, Bible said Isaiah 53 and verse number one. Who has believed God report? To whom the arm of the Lord has been revealed, but he shall grow up like a tender plant, a root out of dry ground. There's no form of comeliness about him that we should desire him. He said, there is no beauty that we should desire. Isn't that something? God formed Christ in the fact that we just wouldn't be a Lord. How, well, how good he looked. He said, man, when you see him, you just like a common person. There was nothing special about his external. There was no comeliness about him that we should desire. He said, oh, there goes Jesus. Hey. <laughs> no, it wasn't like that. Now, Bible says in verse number three, he was despised. He was rejected by me. A man of sorrows acquainted with grief. And we did, as it were, hit our faces from him. He was despised. And we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are here. That beat him till his flesh hung open. To the point when he's hanging on an old rugged cross where he cries out, Eli, Eli, the master baka now. That is to say, my God, my God. Why have I forsaken you? He was abandoned for that small period, not because of anything he did wrong. It was all on us. Talking about a Savior that doesn't love you. 
He said, and we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. Watch out, church. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity, the wickedness of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. He had opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. Sheep without a shearer. He opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and judgment. And who would declare this generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of my people. He was stricken. You see, all of this, because of what we did, his love was already demonstrated. But see, the question then becomes, how do I reciprocate how thankful I am for the Lord who does so much. They need to hurry this service up. He, he, he better not sing another song. If he preaches long again, I ain't coming next week. You love God how? Where? Because you got a carnal mindset. And then you're the same one. Lord, please let me get this raised. Lord, please let me uh, get in this school. Lord, please uh, help me pass this test that I ain't saying for. Lord, please. Lord, please. Lord, please. Bless my kids. Lord, protect them. Keep them safe. And yet we don't have time to give allegiance to him. Amen. Service too long. Too much singing. Too much praising. Too much this. Too much that. Do you really want to go to heaven? That's kind of the theme of heaven. Day and night around the throne singing and praising God. This ain't nothing but the dress rehearsal. And many of us tired of that. Came, but I can't wait to get out. Something wrong with your spirit. Satan is sick in you. But we gotta be on guard. We gotta be mine. Now, <laughs> Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verse 17. Bible says, and when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying that was told them. And those who heard it marveled at the old things which were told them. But Mary kept it all to herself, pondered in her heart. These things are now being revealed. Then the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen and that was told to them. This is why it's important for us to continue praising God for all he's promised and perform in our lives. They were instructed by the angels what was going to happen. They went and checked it out, and it was all true. They felt blessed and were privileged. Man, God came to the common people with this miraculous word, this miraculous message, and everybody who heard it was marveled, and they were excited about it. And then after they left, this is that. We saw the Savior. Man, we met the Savior. He's going to redeem Israel. Probably that was their thinking, but they walked away glorifying and praising God. Can you praise him? Even when things are not going right in your life? See, I, I, don't, I don't quote Psalm 34 uh, in verse 1 just because it's my favorite scripture. Because my favorite scripture, it helps me with my perspective that I'm supposed to have. Because some things are not always the way it needs to be. Some things are not always the way I want it to be. He said, oh, I'm doing good. I'm not having to be you, but then everything, everything still does not smoothed out the way I want it. But it's not about that. I, I'm going to bless him in the good times and in the bad times. See, the fair weather, friend, see, they're only going to be in your life doing fair weather. Amen, hey, 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 somebody. Income tax time. First, first of the month. Amen. Can I, can I, can I say, it? hey, girl, you know you look mighty good this week, girl. First of the month. Check came. Check came. Check came. See, fair weather friends. But what about, man, when I really need a friend? Your midnight hour. Got a call on. But see, the Lord's looking for people who's not just in it for the fair weather. Oppression may come. Will you still stand, on, stand for me? Will you still stand on my word? Can I count on you to be an advocate for me? Can I count on you to raise your children up in the nurture and the admonition of the world? Or are you just going to go with the way of the world? Well, better when they wrong, do as the wrong is do. Okay, okay. okay. Right, that's a whole other sermon. I'm going to let that go. Uh, but the reality is, he said, look, are you an advocate for him? He said that after it was confirmed what the angels said, what they said, God revealed to them, they saw the praise of God. See, is your praise only predicated to good happenings? That would only mean you're only a fair weather worshiper. But see, when you realize how good God has been, in spite of you, 
your kids are sitting blessed and they don't even know. <laughs> and, and man, they, look, they take advantage of stuff you weren't even afforded. Because man, God is, man, God, God, is, God has blessed them, look, in spite of you. And man, when you realize that they are able to experience some joys that you've never experienced, look, man, God bless them in spite of us. And man, he does that every single day. But see, he's a, he's a savior. He's a mighty good savior. He's a mighty good savior to me. And as a result of his goodness, man, I want to I be all I can be in the army, in the service of the Lord. Faith Christians ain't going to heaven. Fair weather Christians not going to hell. I just came to burst, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter won't get it done for you. Well, it's only in fair weather. And then what about when the thunderstorms and the tsunami comes and the hurricane comes and the snowstorm comes? And that may start happening in your life. You need an anchor with the Savior. See, when you anchor yourself in people, what happens when they walk out of your life and say, I don't love you no more? Their promise and pledge in front of people, I do and I will and we did, and then they said, I don't no more. Now what? But man, if my anchor's in the Lord, see, what men may do to me might hurt me, but man, I can still raise my head because, see, I know I'm loved by my heavenly father. And he's demonstrated his love to me through his son, Jesus Christ, in the person of my elder brother, Jesus Christ. Jesus came to die, to be the example that we need so we know how to live and to link us back together with God. Sin is the separator, but Christ is the reconciler. He's able to bring these two parties together. He's the glue that binds us all together. You don't know Jesus today. I wouldn't walk out of here without a relationship with God. You come to Jesus by hearing the gospel message. How his son died. He was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. You got to be willing to believe that same message. You got to be willing to repent of your sins, make a change of mind, which then leads to a change of action. What, what do you mean? You got to stop doing some things. Amen. Everything you're doing now, not healthy. Some things you're doing can cause you to go to jail. Some things might keep you out of jail, but it can cause you to be lost eternally. Got to be willing to make a confession, the same confession that you made. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And be willing to be baptized today in the water for the remission of your sin. We've made all the preparation for you. The water is ready. The clothes are ready. Angels in heaven will stand by waiting to rejoice. We're ready. We're just waiting on you. He said, well, I I'll do it next week. I'll do it next year. I'll do it first thing in 2019. So I guarantee you, you friend. All you got to do is watch the news. There are people dying in all kinds of ways today. People are being abducted. People are children are, are getting hit at the bus stop. Still mass shootings. You just never know where the next one's going to pop up. Let me tell you something. You going to rely on the government? You think so? Aren't we shut down right now? You keep putting your trust and confidence in man. But well, see, we serve, a, we serve a saint who never going to leave you or forsake you. The, the scriptures declare he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Why don't you give your life to him today? Hear and believe and repent of your sins, confession your faith in Christ, and being baptized today in water for the remission of your sins. You know it's time. You know it's time, other folk know it's time. It's time for you to grow up and do the right thing. Huh? The real men follow God. Real women follow God. Amen, somebody. Huh? So I'm part of you who treat me like a job. Grow up then. Be responsible. Amen. When you're responsible, everybody don't have to keep telling you what you need to do when you are already been instructed. Amen. That's a blessing for the parents. Parents should have jumped out of their seats while they go. Amen. But the reality is, you remember the body of Jesus Christ, you allow other things. Let me tell you something. Jesus is the best gift you could ever get. Because that's the gift that keeps on giving. That, see, Jesus can be passed on generation to generation. The gift that you're looking to receive or the gift that you give out, hey, that's only going to last for so long. The warranty going to run out. 
And some of y'all didn't buy the extended plan because it costs too much. And, and, and guess what? It's going to break down all the time anyway. That's not going to last. But the gift of Jesus Christ is the best gift you could ever give or the best one you could ever receive. If you're a member of the body, you say, man, I haven't been doing all I can do. Man, that's why I'm so grateful we have a Savior, man, that loves us in spite of us. He's giving you another day. That's another opportunity to get your business right. He said, I'm not going back there. I'm not going to do that again. And if I fall short, look, his, his blood's still able to cleanse. He said, Lord, I had it in my mind. I felt sure to get Give me the strength so I can do better today. We're about to stand. And we're going to send the Savior's invitation. If you need somebody to walk with you, walk on down. We're going to ask you to walk down the middle aisle. If you have a prayer request, go there uh, to the wall. We'll take it. Make it known. Make it known. Today is the day of salvation. If you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. God made sure that you were going to be here on this day, hearing this word from this messenger. Not just because there's nothing else to do. It was something in here for you. Don't say no to Jesus. Who said yes to the cross for you? Let us stand and say, Come on to Jesus today. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. Is there one? Nothing but the blood. Anybody need prayer for your home?